Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this session, which is the second session on productivity and productivity measurement. And uh, here we will go a little more detail into productivity measurement. So here is the outline. Uh, we'll initially talk about project planning and productivity systems. Uh, the broad context, uh, we'll get a little detail into the productivity measurement system and the components. Then we will look at what are the inputs and the monitoring options. Basically, what goes into the productivity measurement system and what are the options we have for monitoring productivity. We will go to performance factors and forecasting. And finally, we will look at factors that influence productivity and what can we do to address productivity improvement at, from a productivity, strictly from a productivity and project per performance perspective. And then we will broadly discuss how it fits in the lean context. Now, I think we are familiar with this uh, graphic. Okay, basically what this shows is the different levels of planning. We have the master plan, the macro plan, micro plan and the execution. And uh, we are familiar with the different documents that are related to each of these uh, stages. For example, when the, you know, we have uh, the major milestone stage, typically reflect, uh, you know, shown as a Gantt chart or a bar chart. We have the CPM stage you know which we associate with the macro plan and you know we look at you know from a timeline we look at quarterly planning and the in the master plan or broader monthly at the macro plan level weekly at the micro plan level and going to a daily plan at the execution level so this is when we look at the planning stages and when we actually move on to the monitoring stages we have the similar framework but now the information flows in the reverse we have what happens in execution through daily progress report, it's reported to, to the planning team to the next level. And from there, it goes to the macro plan level where we have different other kinds of report. We'll get into this briefly. And finally, to the master plan level, we have project level reporting. So as you can see here at the, at the uh, base level, it's a daily progress report, which reports basically from what is happening at the work phase to the planning team and also to the site planning as well as the project planning team. From here, we generate all, the, all periodic reports. So once this is raw data and translating this into this reporting format becomes important because this is the base level monitoring that takes place. And now through these reports, we are able to get more uh, micro level control on the project, which is important. Now, from here, we go from using the data from these reports, you go back into the CPM and generate the more the macro and the project level reports which are required for project control. The focus of what we are doing today and in our context is more in this phase. What is happening at the micro level? How are we monitoring productivity on a weekly basis or on a daily basis or on a monthly basis? And how are we monitoring production on these same time frames? And this obviously only if we have that level of control, we can ultimately control the project. So if we look at the productivity measurement system, the whole lecture today focuses basically on this framework. Okay, what we have is uh, different elements of what is a conventional productivity measurement system. And uh, what we are going to do is take each of these elements in detail and discuss it and show the kind of calculations, the kind of reports that can be generated. Now, there is a lot of numerical uh, calculations and numerical dealings in this session. Uh, it might be, might, you might have to actually review the session offline as well as uh, go through the supplementary material to understand the calculation details. So, in this lecture session, we will go through the conceptual details and illustrate the concept through what calculations take place. But definitely some offline work is required to get into the detail of the computations and to be able to understand it from a very fundamental perspective. So if we go into uh, when we look at the product, we are looking at interested in productivity or production. So if we look at the basic calculations, we see there are two inputs as we covered earlier. We have 
the the uh, man days or labor cost or crew days or the total cost input which is we take it as input and then the output which is the quantity of material and we have covered earlier how both of these kind of are, are, are the components of productivity as well as production. Now as we go to looking at the input side of things, if we look at how do we get input, we have many alternatives as we had discussed in the last class. We have crew days, crew hours, man days, man hour or we have labor cost or total cost and which one to use actually depends on the activity. You know, and the kind of monitoring and control which you have planned for your project. The reason we have discussed this in the last lecture to some extent, but I'm just re-emphasizing again here. A lot of times when you're looking at monitoring requirements, it's adequate to use the crew day, crew hours, man day or man hours, depending on the type of activity and your monitoring requirement. This does not give you your accurate uh, what do you say control of costs and time to the for from a documentation and a reporting standpoint, but it gives you enough information from a monitoring and control standpoint. So later on when you're doing your project documentation and billing requirements, you will definitely want to go to the total cost side of it. But for a monitoring and a daily uh, weekly perspective, the man days or the crew hours is 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 the best metric and this has globally been found and it is also a very good metric because this is typically what we call the variable component of a project. This is the highly variable component. So if we understand the variability that is happening here and are able to somewhere control it, we have a better chance of getting a, a more uh, what do you say stricter control on the project. So as it is written here whether we want to do crew days or man hours, it just depends on the type of project on the type of activity and the type of work that is going on and the diversity of crew in a particular activity. And when we use costs, we definitely have more work to do, more computations to do, but in the in terms of recording and documentation, this is what is required from an accounting perspective. Now as we go in further into data collection uh, the inputs, there are several formats that are used on sites. Okay, whether you can see in the format here, you know, it talks about the different trades, the number of workers that are there, the total number of hours, you know, the, the, area, the area in which people worked. So this is a way in which you can get man hours or crew hours or who, how much time was spent, what the input was there. In a more, uh, you know, different format, this is, you can see it's a tablet or a, a, a smartphone format. You can see there is again the type of trade that's used the work performed, the number of people, the number of hours spent. So again, these are all forms in which you can get inputs and the worker hours that have been spent on different activities. These can be, today you can have forms like this, might be in the future, these can be in a more automated form or you know, uh, the people recognize who is in which area and doing what work, but all these ultimately get you to collecting the input required for the activity or the project. Next we go on to the output which is the quantities. Again, this should seem to be simple to be able to calculate quantities of a work, but there are its own complexities. So if you look at different, there are different methods to calculate outputs, whether it's volume, area, weight, units complete, level of effort which we will cover in a little bit of detail and there are other units which you might want to use, but again it depends on the type of activity. So here is an example. Uh, this is from a uh, uh, Bureau of Indian Standards handbook which talks about various types of activities or which specifies and the type of units to be used for measurement. So you can see that we have here we have volume, we have you know running meters, uh, you know we have uh, area, we have again volume, we have uh, weight in kilograms, we have numbers or units of measurement for precast components. So so the, the type of unit you use again in, in for example in, in a similar work like steel and iron you have not only weight but you have running meter and square meter. So one has to be fairly judicious in selecting the kind of unit based on activity and consistent with it across in your project. So this, this inconsistency can mean that your 
uh, output measurement is wrong and if your output measurement is wrong, your productivity measurement system or all your other systems can be faulty. So, this is extremely important and here is another slide again that shows the various types of uh, units that can be used for conventional construction activities. This is as it is as you can see it is a Bureau of Indian Standards handbook. So, this is fairly standard practice, but has to be implemented on a project standardized and be consistent. Now, let me stop with this at this stage is there any questions on what we covered so far? It was basic uh, inputs and outputs. Is there any question? Yes, sir, uh, the last execution part. Yeah. Uh, so, you, you have mentioned that the, the course is very much focused on the execution part. Yes. So, why we need to focus on the execution part? Also? Yeah, we need to is focus on the execution part because this is because a lot of our critical path method is focused here. Because the inputs, what about the data we are getting from the execution? Right. No. So, so, our CPM generally the focus is here, assuming that this data is available. Yes. And we take this data for as inputs and then do all of our processing. Yes. Now, but obviously, what we are, so when I say we are focusing here, it is not, does not mean that we should not focus there. There is already a whole area which focuses on the project planning and control part. We are looking at how good the data is, that is not only how good how to collect the right data and how to do the monitoring the, the, the micro and the execution level monitoring because that is where the processes come. Okay, So, again when we discuss project management and process management, this is typically project management side of things, this is typically the process management side. Okay, So, if I say this is project and this is more like process. Okay, that is that is roughly, it is not, I mean that is roughly the way it is divided and in terms of lean we are looking more at process. The collected data? In not the only the data, yeah. the whole, the framework we are looking from a process perspective. So, if I am looking at project management, when we look at project planning and control, I am justifiably looking at the higher level and then we assume that the processes are going up. But we really know that sometimes, I mean we have been on site, we know how, how challenging it is to get the process going or you, you know that there is a big separation between the planning team and the execution team. What the planning team plans need not be what is actually feasible. So, we are trying to fill that gap by starting from here. Yeah. Because if the process is going good, then only the project will be successful. Exactly. It is exactly. exactly. So, okay. it is better to focus on process than project. You need to focus on both. You need to focus on project as well as process. And there is already uh, a lot of focus on project level tools. We are bringing in the focus through this course on the process level tools. That would be uh, another way to put it. We are going bottom up now. We are going bottom up, correct? The top down is already there. It does not mean you can ignore project levels, okay? There is project or it does not mean process is more important than project. Both are important. But today, a lot of spotlight is on project. We are also showing the spotlight on process saying that look unless this is also in place your project management will not yield the results you want. Okay, good, good question. Anything else?